Hello, this is Game Changers Nigeria Show. On this episode, we meet with a lady architect who was instrumental to the design of Maryland Mall Ikeja Lagos. Her story is that of breaking barriers, even in the midst of a male dominated profession. She's beautiful, but getting the job done is one of her major forte. When she's not working, she enjoys watching shows like Game of Thrones, just like many of us. Let the show begin. Hi, my name is Susu Shino. I'm an architect. I run a practice for CM Design Atelier here in Lagos. Hi Tosi. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. You look good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you. you've done a couple of things yeah. for me at a very young age and um, you know, breaking barriers and stuff like that. So, how did you get started? Well, I'm an architect, so right. I studied architecture. Um, right. But I decided very early on that I wanted to be an architect. Right. Um, about the age of 12, wow. when my father was building a retirement home in Ikorojo. As you right. know, that generation, you would come to Lagos and then you go back home, mm -hmm. that, that kind of home. Right. Um, and I was the only person who was interested in the floor plans. And I had excelled at fine arts in school and I was doing technical drawing so it was just an obvious kind of translation right. I wanted to be an architect. Right. I wasn't the only person who wanted to do this but you know very few people ended up there's myself and someone else in school but I'm the only one who's actually finished okay. properly as an architect right. um, from, from Queen's College in my set. So um, that's really where it started from. It's been a long journey, it's a very long course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Six years. Wow. Yeah, you know, um, at two degrees, you do a first degree and a second, second degree. Second degree, right. What, what schools did you go? Okay, secondary school, Queen's College. Right. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, university, although I went to the UK, um, okay. I did A-levels at a uh, school called Afro College, and then I went to university. I did my first degree at King's University. Okay. And then I wasn't sure I wanted to be an architect, so I did architecture first degree there. Um, and then I decided, oh, let me take some time out. I worked for a year in a local practice in Richmond. Right. And then I went and I did a course in a master's in urban design okay. at Bartlett School. Um, and I did that really because I, I felt when I left Nigeria, because I was a boarder and then I was a bit of a day girl, but I, I had a very sheltered childhood. And I remember when I got to my A-levels, people asked me where you're from and I couldn't answer a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I was very aware that I was I had missing gaps of knowledge. Um, and when I even did architecture, I started to realize when I came home, why do certain things not work properly? Why is it some housing style? Like, oh, the gap between the house here and here is like right. one meter. So, close. so right. I started to um, question things, but I didn't really understand why. Mm -hmm. And that was why I did the masters in urban design. So I learned about Lagos from a very academic point of view, mm. about the growth of the city, how everything started in Saleko. The reason why Lagos is here is because of the ports, you know, um, the breakways that were done in 1901. So I have a very good grasp or understanding of Lagos history. Right. And it was with that confidence that I went back to school to do the part two of the architecture course. And I did that at the Architecture Association in London. Right. So Lagos inspired you to become an architect? Yes, yes, it has actually. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I have such a strong love for the city. Right. And I don't know why. I was one of those people when I was abroad, I would always look for Where are you from? Years. I'm from Lagos. I'm working oh. for a joke. Oh. So some people will say, oh, you're from Lagos City, but you're not from Lagos City. Right. But I think there's something so beautiful about, about Lagos and mm. I think um, when you have a strong affinity for a place, you always look for purpose and yearn to be there and to maybe, uh, in your own little way, add value, you know. So has Lagos rewarded you so far? I believe so, yes. I believe so. I think if I had stayed in Europe, I wouldn't have achieved a tenth of, of what I've been able to achieve today. Okay, so do you get intimidated by men? No, I don't. Why? I don't because I come from a family of girls and oh. um, my dad told us that when his friends would say things like you don't have a boy, he goes, boys are very troublesome, they will steal your car, they will do this, they will break that. That girls will always remember their fathers in their right, right. So I mean, he, he, he brought us up with the confidence not to have a complex. But I will say that um, when I started my practice, it's probably when I noticed more that I was a woman. Mm. When I work for someone, um, you're shielded from the client negotiations and dealing with the business end of architecture. Mm. But when you run your own office, you're so conscious of it. So 
or you're, you're, you're thrown into the realities of the real world. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I've faced it more now than I did before. But I won't say I've taken it as, as a negative because I think anything that you are so conscious of that is a minus will influence and affect the way you approach your business. You will make decisions on things like what, oh, did I not get that job because I'm a woman? Mm. Or, or, you know, what, were they trying to intimidate me because of my feminine status? Mm -hmm. So I've decided not to see it as a disadvantage, and to actually see it as, as an advantage. Right. Because people don't forget you, because they know to you, mm -hmm. and when you do deliver, they remember. So it actually can be an advantage, and I've used that in my case. So, how does that story inspire other women out there? Um, I think you need to you need to man up, mm. especially on site. Man up, <laughs> man up. <laughs> um, I have quite a few females that work for me, more like here. Right. <laughs> and I always tell them, when you work in a male industry, mm. you need to assert yourself very clearly. When I go to site, I don't go in skirt. You know, you have to be one of the boys. Right. You have to speak guy. Right. <laughs> And you have to let them know that you are here to do your job. Right. If you come across as a bit fluffy, they will just wash you to the side. You know? So right. you need to assert yourself. Orimio, Jekingo, Kyoto, Kafara, Tocha, Eledamio, Magenta, Raka, make my soup. Orimio, Jekingo, Kyoto, Kafara, Tocha. Momanta <laughs> Tati <laughs> Some of five. Moments but Hey, Jesus. 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 Sweet help Niger, thank you. The Maryland Mall. How did you come about that project? Wow, Maryland, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs>
Rayland obviously has been our biggest show, you know, all right. of everybody knows that we exist. Right. Um, it really didn't start as an it, we didn't we didn't get a direct commission that oh uh, we're looking for an architect to do a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. it, we were actually asked originally to do a design review. Our client who is the developer, Purple Capital, um, they had a JV with uh, a family that owned the land. Right. And um, the family had approached them because they required finance. So right. They had done this proposal and they needed somebody to back it. So, and then obviously they would have equity share. Um, so we were brought in to review it. And there were quite a few things that were not working. You could see where they were trying to go, but it wasn't holistic. Right. Um, so it started as a design review, and then obviously both parties agreed that they needed to redo the project. And I guess we were in the right place at the right time. And you know, to be honest, when I started it, we didn't realize it would be this big. Big, right? But slowly, as the construction was going on, and they were having the publicity required to let the world know that this project was coming on board, everybody started talking about. It. I'm like, okay. Wow, okay, this is a big deal. This is good. And so that was quite exciting actually. Okay. Would, that, would you say that's the most challenging job you've done? I think, I think it's the most complex because okay. of all the elements involved in it. There was a lot to do with the structure, the services, the number of people to coordinate, the tenants, you know, um, other people's fit out. So it, it, was, um, it, was, it was quite a challenging job. Um, and I think to be honest, sometimes maybe because we didn't appreciate the complexity, right. we didn't start from a scared place. Okay. We started from a very comfortable place. We're just going along. So we, we learned on the job, you know, there were things that we, do, we will not do the same now, you know, that we, we've taken on from the experience. But I think if we had known the extent of what was at stake, we would have been under a lot of pressure. We would have put ourselves under pressure. And, mm -hmm. and I'm happy that it, it came from that, it came from a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the design in the early stage, in the early stages, we did it based on our feeling and our interpretation, our perceptions of what we would enjoy, how we would enjoy how to shop. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't do it from, oh, we have all this tension, we must have this number of square meters. We, you know, so it came from a very flexible place. Mm -hmm. and, and, and funny enough, because of that neutrality, there were a lot of things that didn't actually change. You know? Right. It evolved as is expected, mm -hmm. but a lot of the key elements that we wanted to keep are still there. And, 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 and it's nice to see that in the finished product. Next time on Game Changers Nigeria Show. Five years time. I think we would like to acknowledge as having a plastic power. We don't want it to be a situation of chance. Um, I think so far we've proven ourselves to be strong in being innovative, but we have to stay consistent in innovative and keep pushing back. Some people will say at this stage we are the new kids on the floor. But as we bring as we're the new kids, the other kids come up.